Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Cash's Corner. Lee, you know, it's so fitting that you would be the one to be guest hosting today because I actually became aware of Cash Patel and his role in all of this in your book, The Plot Against the President. And it was really uh, you, I believe, who connected us ultimately at the beginning. Oh, I'm very happy to hear it. It's been an immensely uh, profitable relationship, not just for, for you and Cash and Epoch Times, but really, I mean, just all the different, all the information that you guys provide, the insight that the show provides. And, um, you know, you really launched Cash as a media superstar. You see him on Truth Social, hundreds of thousands of followers. And I have to say, I mean, I, I'm really surprised, but every time I look at the stuff that he's posting, it's brilliant. It's informative. It's a lot of fun. So I couldn't be happier uh, to have been the person who, who int introduced the two of you. You know, when you read the plot against the president, I'm just kind of thinking back a little bit. You know, Cash really understood how the DOJ worked. And he, you know, the thing that really, really uh, made an impression on me was that he really he figured out how to depose these witnesses in ways that they could not kind of get out of the fact that they really knew nothing about Russia collusion. And that kind of set the stage for unraveling uh, Russiagate. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that, that was one of the really important parts, you know, writing the book and telling the story. I have to say also, I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't know that authors necessarily have favorite lines or favorite passages from their book. But there's a part where Cash is talking about, you know, um, the investigation that he and uh, former Congressman Nunes and Jack Langer and those guys set up over at the House Intelligence Committee. And Cash says uh, it was our thing, you know, just how they named it, Objective Medusa. And you see, um, you just see the amount of effort that these guys put into getting to the bottom of, of, of different issues that were plaguing the Department of Justice at the time and that uh, tragically seemed to have only gotten much worse uh, with our federal law enforcement authorities. But yeah, Cash's insight into the DOJ and the FBI, lots of these people he worked with and, you, you know, he, he expresses profound respect for the people who are really doing the jobs and the people who are not. He is rightly contemptuous of them and expresses uh, on behalf of the American public our contempt for the people who are deceiving Americans and hurting the country. Well, so oh, I want to talk about two things today. Um, one of them is this, you know, this new filing from John Durham uh, about on the Danchenko case. I mean, some wild revelations in there. And at the same time, I mean, many of us seem to agree at this point that this Mar-a-Lago raid was kind of an extension of this original Russia gate, which, of course, John Durham, you know, is seeking some accountability around. And at the same time, there's uh, a whole series of new events that are transpiring that seem to be deeply connected. And you've actually been writing about this. But let, let, let's start with the Danchenko case, this Danchenko filing. I mean, OK, Lee, when you read this thing, what did you think? I mean, the first thing that stands out, which is pretty amazing, and, you know, we see a lot of our, our friends and our social media sleuths, and the first thing that they pointed out was the fact that this guy who is now, he's going to be on trial in October, Igor Danchenko, is that he was a confidential human source for the FBI. And the most astonishing thing was they made him a confidential human source uh, after they knew he'd been lying. He was the primary subsource for Christopher Steele's now notorious dossier of reports alleging Donald Trump's uh, connections to Russia, which we now know is, you know, well, we knew, many of us knew at the time it was absolute garbage. Um, so this guy Danchenko was the person who was feeding Steele with a lot of this nonsense. When the FBI first, uh, when they say they first interviewed Danchenko, in January 2017, Danchenko walked a lot of it back saying, yeah, you know, I was exaggerating or it was bar talk. Nonetheless, the FBI decided to make him a confidential human source, which meant a couple different things. The first thing it meant was they were paying him, right? They had, now they had them on the payroll, which meant the U.S. taxpayer was paying for this guy who had lied to help frame a presidential candidate. Um, and then the president of the United States in January 2017, Donald Trump was president of the United States and they hired the guy who was behind the lies that got a warrant to spy in his campaign. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. Hey, uh, let me just jump in. 
to the guy who told them he was lying. Y- yeah. He said he'd been exaggerating. He said, yeah, I think Steele misunderstood this or, you know, uh, it was bar talk or, you know, that's what it was. And, um, well, I mean, of course, the FBI at that point kept investigating Donald Trump. They would have Carter Page under a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act warrant. The last renewal was at the end of June. So they were uh, they were spying on the Trump circle. They ha- they were collecting the electronic communications of the Trump circle into um, it appears into the early fall of 2017. So it's 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 pretty astonishing, and that's what really st- stood out for most of the people who were going through this new filing. Um, now I will say that that one of the issues that a lot of people have raised, and that certainly struck me when I when I first saw it was the way that John Durham has shaped this case is the way he shaped the Michael Sussman case as well. Um, you know, the Sussman case where he was acquitted of, um, of, uh, of lying to the FBI. Well, to do that, to set that case up, Durham had to frame it so that Michael Sussman uh, came in and lied to the FBI and the FBI was the party who had been, that had been deceived, right? That was the, the, the sucker or the patsy. He's doing the same thing with the Danchenko trial. Um, The numerous accounts he's charged Danchenko with are for lying to the FBI. The question is, and this is something, Jan, you and I have been speaking about for for years now, and I know that most of the viewers of Cash's Corner are incredibly well read in on the whole subject, but I think our general assessment is that the FBI knew very well that Danchenko was making this stuff up as was Christopher Steele, because in fact, the FBI had outsourced their lies, right, to contractors, some of whom they wound up paying, we now find out, like Igor Danchenko. So that's, I think, a pro, uh, I don't know enough, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see when cash comes back um, to talk about the different legal issues that, that this may raise. But I think a lot of people are wondering, is John Durham ever going to turn his attention to the FBI? Because if he's again making them out to be the patsy, um, that they were lied to by Igor Danchenko and they were operating in good faith. A lot of people are going to be um, more than disappointed. They're going to look at this as though um, it was a cover up. If it's protecting the FBI and just going after people like Sussman and Danchenko, that's going to raise a lot of questions. Well, okay, well, l- let me ask this, and I, I realize we can't really sort of dig into the legalities of this because neither of us are, the, are, are experts in this, but I mean, couldn't he just simply be trying to establish that he lied to the FBI and this is, you know, this is a crime and this is the way to basically, um, you know, hold him accountable for doing this with the whole FBI question, whether the FBI was willingly taking the lies or, or encouraging or whatever it is that, that might be alleged, um, that that would be a separate issue to deal with. I'm, well, that's the hope, that he's using this as an instrument to get Danchenko, uh, well, to get him convicted. And then I think also in the hope that he'll be able to build on this and then he'll be able to go after the FBI. Or who knows, maybe Igor Danchenko has so much pressure on him, he'll feel compelled to talk and give up different, um, you know, different officials at the FBI or give up uh, Clinton campaign officials or start giving people up. That's the hope. 